what world record will never be beaten. Greatest amount of extras used in a single movie scene. The record holder is 1982's Gandhi which used 300,000 for a 10 minute funeral sequence. Most films now prefer to use CGI for crowds of that size, so it's likely to remain the record holder. That one is easy to beat. Make a soccer movie in Europe starring teams from England, Spain, and Italy and the fans will play fans for free. Make 10 shots in the stadiums and boom, new record. I mean if you wanted to beat it you could, but the point is, that no one wants that many extras, and would rather use CGI. CGI is expensive and time consuming. Money is the thing that matters in the end. If you don't have to pay the extras, and can get the shots you need in a few days, the producers will go for the cheaper option. The scenes for Green Street Hooligans for example were filmed during actual soccer games. Even if you don't have to directly pay the extras, there's large amounts of infrastructure required including food, water, security, toilets, etc. If, like the soccer match example, there are 300,000 people already doing what you want, sure, per give back, but that's a rare find. By the way guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like this video, and subscribe to the channel. It will help us out quite a bit, and if you don't enjoy the videos in the future anymore, you can always unsubscribe. Let's get back to the video. Wayne Gretzky's most points slash goals slash assists. Gretzky also has the records for most hockey records held. Edit, link to 23 records believed to be unbreakable. The dude is part of the highest scoring pair of siblings in NHL along with his brother Brent who tallied I believe 5 points in his brief career. I've seen some talk about who is the goat of goats between all the sports and it's pretty unreal how little respect Gretzky gets, although with how limited hockey is in popularity it's not too surprising. Part of the problem with how little respect Gretzky gets, is because the NHL gets poor coverage around the US. If things keep going like they are, the MLS will pass up the NHL in ratings. If no one watches hockey, no one talks hockey. If no one talks hockey, no one talks Gretzky. I say this as a hockey fan, and it makes me sad. One of my favorite things about Gretzky is he still manages to be humble. There was an interview, where he was with Mary Oli Mooks and Bobby Orr, honestly, some of the best hockey talent every to see the ice, and they are asked, if the greatest player to every play, is at the table. And without a beat, Gretzky says no, Gordy Howe is missing. Most of the world's youngest records have been retired. I think at some point, probably when a girl had to be rescued trying to be the youngest to sail solo around the world, or a 7 year old died trying to be the youngest to fly across the country people realized this was irresponsible, and not something to be encouraged. So you can definitely still do it, I know a family whose twins are the unofficial youngest to cycle the Pan American Highway, for example but no one will recognize you for doing so. I clicked your link for the 7 year old, and I'm confused what the record was supposed to even be. It says her fight instructor was piloting when it crashed, and her father was on board as well. What did it even mean for her to be the youngest to fly across the country? She sat on her dad's lap, and flew the clean, but in reality, he had complete control the whole time. Just like I steered a boat with a captain holding the wheel too. Letting you actually steer a smaller boat, way out in the water, in calm conditions, with an adult nearby to take control, if necessary would be fine too, and then you are actually steering it, but it doesn't mean much. Several baseball records won't be beaten due to the way the game is played now, one of the big ones being Cy Young's winning record. No pitcher will ever match that, because they don't pitch every day anymore. No other player has even come close, that record has stood for over 100 years. Chan Ho Park gave up two grand slams to the same guy in one inning. Maybe, possibly, if baseball is played for another thousand years, a manager might again leave a pitcher in long enough to give up two grand slams to the same batter. But no one is ever, 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 ever going to give up three grand slams to the same batter in one inning. Same for Narl and Ryan Strickia at record. It just won't happen with the advent of strict pitch counts, 5-man rotations, and the general shifting caution with pitchers. 
He's got the record with 5,714 Ks over like 27 seasons, and the next closest pitcher is Randy Johnson with 4,875 in 22 seasons. Justin Verlander is the active leader in strictly odds with 3,013, but he is 16 years into his career and is 37. Nobody will ever catch up to Nalan Ryan. The final episode of NAS Asterisk H, which aired on February 28, 1983, was the most watched series finale ever, drawing in 105.9 million viewers. Because there were only 3 or 4 channels when it aired, I think the viewing numbers are untouchable. And the part that makes it even more impressive, that's 105.9 million viewers at the same time all watching the same thing. TV will never be in a situation like that again especially in our post-streaming world where people schedule TV around them instead of scheduling around TV. I believe 32-32 million is about the maximum that the top shows get now. Outside of live sports, they don't even get close anymore. Streaming has completely wrecked the old ratings system. Big ticket network shows are around 5 million and special events might hit 10. The longest lasting light bulb is still switched on and burning after 120 years of operation. It will come to an end in the year 17776. If you know, you know. The story takes place on an earth where humans stop dying, aging, and being born in 2026. All social ills were subsequently eliminated, and technology preventing humans from any injury was developed. In the United States, American football evolved to include new rules, including those that allow fields thousands of miles long, hundreds of in-game players, and games millennia long. Over time, computers gained sentience due to constant exposure to broadcast human data. By the year 17776, the space probe Pioneer 9, called 9, has gained sentience and made contact with Pioneer 10, called 10 and the Jupiter icy moons explorer, called Juice. As 9 adjusts to a world radically different from that of the 20th century, the three space probes watch multiple football games occurring across the United States, a game using the entire Eti of Nebraska as a field in which the next point scored wins the game, a game in which players strive to possess every existing football signed by Coy Detmer, a game played between the Canadian border and the Mexican border deadlocked. For 13,000 years at the bottom of a gorge in Arizona, an NFL regulation game between the Denver Broncos and the Pittsburgh Steelers that changed over 15,000 years into 58 playing teams owning and capitalizing upon portions of the field while the ball is lost, a 500 game that results in the destruction of the Centennial Light and a game in which the possessing player is attempting to score an automatic win by hiding in his team's end zone for 10,000 years. Youngest Monarch. Both Alfonso XIII of Spain and Jani of France became kings immediately upon birth, as their respective fathers died before the sons were born. I mean since royal houses are opening to have the queen as head monarch, one could think this would happen if one died in childbirth. People live longer, safer lives now, so for Prince George, the firstborn of the youngest generation of the English royal family, to equal that record three generations of preceding family members, Queen Lees, Prince Charles and Prince William, would all have had to die within a nine month period. An awful lot of money is spent on keeping these people alive, so chances are remote. An awful lot of money is spent on keeping these people alive. It's true. Prince Philip is an amazing feat in taxidermy. I think the point is more that monarchies as an institution are severely decreased from when those records were set. The point is you can't beat 0 years and 0 seconds, only match it. Unless you start measuring lifespan from conception. There are a ton of records that have been deemed too dangerous to attempt, and so the relevant organizations will not accept submissions. Things such as longest time without sleep, I'm pretty sure too many people have died trying to break boating speed records. Turns out rocket engines and water are a dangerous combination. Rocket engines and cars are also kinda dangerous. Heck, even rocket engines and planes are dangerous. Maybe, maybe it's rocket engines that are dangerous? 
but seriously, water above certain speed is like a concrete, and on top one that unpredictably moves. What could go wrong? Yeah it's not something I've been terrified of before. And I've fantasized about riding a rocket. But I'd much rather do it on a salt flat than on some choppy lake. I work on rockets for a living. Can confirm, rocket engines are dangerous. I think that I read that it was somewhere around an 85% mortality rate. The current record is 317 miles per hour. I cannot imagine the force that you would hit the water at if there was an accident. Tallest person ever, nowadays the condition he had would be treated much earlier. And humans gradually evolving to become taller. So in the far future the current record of 8, 11 wouldn't be very significant I would reckon, but forgive me if I'm wrong. Better nutrition accounts for most, if not all of that difference, not evolution. So assuming that most people are their healthy height today, it will stay relatively stable, at least in the time span of the next few centuries. I see. Another thing I've heard, is that due to Mars, having a weaker gravity than Earth a human born there would likely be taller than the average human in Earth, so that may affect it, but I'm also not the most knowledgeable person in the subject, so I might be wrong. Yes but that's a system record not a world record. That's why I wasn't sure if it would count but thanks. Keep in mind, we won't actually know for sure until we have kids on Mars. While it seems likely that it will be the case the way in which gravity affects the development of kids bodies is one of those things that kind of hard to test, especially in an ethical manner. Best selling album ever. Thriller will have that record until the sun burns out. I was gonna say something related to the Beatles. Given how decentralized the music industry has become, I don't think we'll ever have more megastars like MJ or the Beatles that everyone listens to. For that to occur, either human populations would need to severely constrict, for instance by near extinction events, or the music industry would need to severely centralize slash consolidate and constrict output somehow. Globally MJ is much bigger than Beatles. My aunts and uncles in their 70s has lived in China their entire life, half of it in rural farmland during Cold War era, knows and cares nothing about anything outside of China, and never left it, but has heard of MJ, and recognizes some of his tunes. Definitely not the case for Beatles. I'm 30, first gen immigrant in Canada, since I was 14. I've heard Beatles songs in their entirety a few times, I can't hum a single one nor remember any of them. My dad's side of the family comes from a very rural area of a third world country. They grew up poor, with no electricity or running water. Yet, everyone knew who Michael Jackson was. Even to this day, they associate America with Michael Jackson. When I went to visit, when I was younger, all the kids would try to dance like Michael Jackson or say how much they loved Michael Jackson, yet there was not a single television in the entire area. Visible stars and galaxies. As the universe expands, and light red shifts more and more of the theoretically possible viewable stars and other celestial bodies disappear. If we had a perfect telescope, and catalogued everything we could, we would notice that catalog shrinking little by little every year as object forever red shift out of our view. The ballpark figure is that we lose 60,000 stars every second from our viewable range. We lose 60,000 stars every second. This sounds like a lot, but it's up against the 6 trillion stars inside our light cone. Edit, so turns out I'm wrong, it's more like a septillion, 10 carat 24, stars in our light cone, or 1k times as many as I previously stated. That's just in our light cone aka the observable universe. The total number is unknown, perhaps unknowable. So losing them at a rate of 60k per second, we'll be out of visible stars in 528 billion years, assuming this rate does not change, which is perhaps erroneous. In any case, enjoy them while you can. Longest siege in the world, Siege of Candia, 1648 to 1669. Diraklion was sieged for 21 whole years. Modern weaponry guarantees that will never be bested. Edit, some people in the comments corrected me. It seems that the actual longest siege is the siege of Suta 1694 to 1720. 
However, when searching the longest siege, Google answers Candia, Crete, something I already knew. IDK guys. Well, the defenders would have really good defenses, and the attackers would have really good weapons. Sieges would probably last even longer these days, because both parties are afraid to blow up the world. If a city is under siege it's a pretty strong indicator that they don't have air superiority. A few weeks of airstrikes from a capable military, and they'd have no food, electricity, or running water. Anything resembling leadership would be picked off, and the grinding away of the will or ability to resist would erode much faster than in sieges of the past. Yup, the game changer here is air. After the 1900s, when you can't reach a city you just fly above and bomb the out of it. You'd need to pull off something like the Siege of Vrax from Warhammer 40k to even stand a chance of lasting 21 years and Vrax only lasted 7. World's largest organ, the largest and loudest musical instrument ever constructed, is the Boardwalk Hall Auditorium organ in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Completed in 1932 by the Midmalosh Organ Company, it had two consoles, one with seven manuals and another movable one with five, 1,477 stop controls, and 33,112 pipes, ranging from pencil size to 64 feet tall. Both wood and metal. It's said to have the volume of 25 brass bands, with a range of seven octaves. Why can this never be broken though? I get it's impressive, but I see nothing stopping it from being broken. Probably because of amplification technology we no longer need 30,000 pipes to make such a big sound. It's insanely expensive and unnecessary. I mean, if I were a billionaire it'd pay to have one built. How cool would it be to literally own an organ, to listen to your music instead of listening to it like a normal person? Most popular single model of home computer. Get Commodore 64. There are so many options now, it would be nearly impossible to reach that level of saturation again. I'm not so sure. This message was typed on my iPhone. As it turns out, many different cell phones have far outsold the Commodore 64. However, they were talking about PCs, not mobile, cell, phones, even though technically, yes, smartphones are computers. What's interesting is, that the Nokia 1100 is still the best selling mobile phone of all time. I had one of those back in the mid 2000s. It was so simple and the battery lasted for ages. I don't miss, having to pay 20c for each text I sent though. That's also because many PC users also build their own PCs. It's not that big of a portion in the grand scheme of things. Enthusiasts are overrepresented on Reddit. Yeah but the majority still buy pre-built ones from builders, not a particular model from Dell, or whatever. Custom built PCs are by far the majority for home users. Most dinosaurs killed in a day. Birds are dinosaurs. Your average house cat can kill a small herd of dinosaurs in a day. Poultry must account for a rather large number of dinosaurs killed each day. Especially such practices as shredding freshly hatched male chicks. To be fair, birds evolved from dinosaurs, but I wouldn't go so far as to say birds are dinosaurs. They're biological descendants. They literally are dinosaurs. The definition of dinosaur is based on descent. This is why scientists say things like non-avian dinosaurs when they want to talk about dinosaurs and exclude birds. Of course pop culture often uses the word dinosaurs to mean any large extinct animal including flying and swimming reptiles and even creatures that lived long before any dinosaurs and were closer related to us than to them. But the actual definition of dinosaur includes birds. John Stockton's all-time assists in the NBA. It's insane, closest is down by 3715 assists. I was just talking about this with some friends, because of CP3. What's more likely to be broken, Stockton or the DiMaggio hit record? Stockton, no one's going to come close to that hit streak in MLB ever again. Regarding Stockton, all you have to do is just draft two of the top 30 players of all time in back to back drafts, and make sure they complement each other perfectly. Then, you have to make sure they play 18 seasons together and only miss 30 games combined during those 18 seasons. 
Easy peasy. This is where I like to remind people that Stockton Steel's record is also untouchable. Chris Paul is the only active player in the top 10, and he trails Stockton by about 1,000 steals. But, again, Stockton played about 500 more games than CP3 has. I mean both records are bonkers, but players have come far closer to the hit, streak record than anybody has to Stockton's career assist record. There are less balls in play, since K's are up, but it's such a big complaint amongst fans, I wouldn't be shocked if measures like lowering the mound or something were taken to increase balls in play. Something like that could enable somebody to break the hit streak record. Days without sleeping. The record since 1986 is 483 hours, 18 days. I believe that's the record for how long someone has been observed continuously and not slept. But then there's also Paul Kern who supposedly didn't sleep for decades after being shot in the head during WWI. The bullet severely damaged his frontal lobe and put him into a very brief coma. After he awoke, he apparently never slept again and he lived for decades afterwards. Doctors corroborate that he didn't sleep again in the hospital, but he wasn't kept under observation for that long. Other people in his life also corroborate that they never saw him sleep again afterwards. But of course without constant observation, he's not in any record books. Sounds more like an urban legend than a real thing. A fake there's not a single living creature on the planet that doesn't undergo some form of sleep, though the form of sleep does vary. It's not an urban legend, you can fact check it. The big point is that there wasn't any continuous observation to confirm. Just because you never see someone sleep, doesn't mean they aren't sleeping, when you're not around. So the dude could have been lying, or maybe not realizing, when he sleeps due to the brain damage. But it is also possible, that the brain damage removed his need for sleep somehow. Or modified his need to sleep, so that it looked different from what we're used to Perhaps his brain was sleeping, while he was still active, similar to sleepwalking, which can be very difficult to tell the person is sleeping, if you're not used to it. And there are actually animals who don't need to sleep. Or have different versions of sleep that could be argued to not count. For example, cetaceans and some birds only sleep with half their brain at a time, so they are always conscious 24 hours a day. There are species of frogs that don't sleep daily, but do hibernate once per year. Then there are lots of species of insects and other invertebrates that don't do anything resembling sleep at all, though they tend to have very short lifespans. A handful of years at most. They retired all of the world's heaviest cat slash dog type records because were overfeeding their pets in an attempt to get the record. The previous winner for cats was a tabby who apparently weighed 46 pounds, generally a healthy range for domestic shorthers is 8 to 10 pounds, and I sincerely hope no cat ever gets anywhere near that big again, that kind of animal abuse just breaks my heart. For dogs it was a mastiff named Zorba 343 LBS. The owner should have been shot. Zorba was a legitimately massive dog in addition to the weight record it also holds the length record. Hopefully the most partners in a day, over 900, gotta be some chafing. Depends on how it's defined. I would think, if you can count one thrust as a partner, you could do say one partner every 5 seconds, so 12 slash minute, and hit 720 in an hour. At that point it really just becomes a logistics game of how do you get that many partners ready to go, and how much time do you need for bathroom breaks, etc. I do admire someone taking the time to do the math. I think she had some fluffers performing the heavy lifting. She was just the main event. The partners wore condoms that were collected for proof of finishing the act in her. It took 24 hours to complete, or an average of 94 seconds per man. She's an American woman, but did it in Poland, probably to avoid getting shut down before the finish. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed watching this, you might as well watch these two.